time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without break your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Also take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with a wonderful lady who is currently in Los Angeles. She's from the Santa Barbara, California area. She's an award-winning singer, songwriter, actress, and also host of a social justice podcast called We Need to Talk. And um, she uh, also sang and um, opera at the Azusa Pacific University, co-owner of GMV Entertainment. And she's also got a few albums out and a couple of songs and um, also involved with some uh activism as well so live from sunny california here to talk all about this and just relaxing in the beautiful state ladies and gentlemen melinda hale melinda good morning good afternoon good evening thanks for joining us (laughs) thanks for having me no problem and we do need the talk for sure i'll tell you that we'll get that in just a minute (laughs) she's she's an award-winning singer songwriter and actress and host of a social justice podcast called we need to talk and your phone and your Grew up in the Santa Barbara area. You um, mm-hmm. sang opera at Azusa Pacific and corner of Jamv Entertainment. You also got some uh, albums out, quite a few songs, and um, you also involved in some activism. But first of all, before we get into all that in your busy life, tell us how you got started. Um, I well, come from a family who appreciates music. My dad did music. My grandmother did music. So I was always exposed to it. Um, but I grew up singing in church. And that was always, you know, where my roots started. And then eventually in school, I got involved in doing more musical theater and then finding the different pop artists and Motown artists that I loved and, uh, and, and connected with. And then from then on, I just I have always known that music was the kind of the main career that I wanted to have. And it was always something that spoke to me. So after you know high school, I went to college I said, for opera and then uh, following that I went out to the real world and just started doing gigs and recording and performing and really wanting to make this a career for myself. That was amazing too. And who are some of your uh, favorite singers uh, growing up? Growing up, Whitney Houston was clearly number one. She really paved the way for me uh, and made me want to to be a singer and make this a career. And you know, my, my dad played a lot of Motown records growing up, so I was always exposed to like Stevie Wonder, I was exposed to Ray Charles. Um, as I got older, and listening to more musical theater and opera singers, I love Audrey McDonald. Um, you know, we just lost recently Jesse Norman, so I listened to her, Julie Verrett. And then um, in more like modern day pop stuff, I'm a really huge fan of like the singer songwriters, uh, NDRE, Gavin DeGraw, Sarah Bareilles, artists like that. So it's really kind of a, an eclectic mix of people that have influenced me and influenced the sound that I have today. That is amazing, too. You talk about opera a great deal. You sang at Azusa Pacific. So mm-hmm. what was the moment that influenced you into opera? Well, I, I actually never wanted to be an opera singer. The whole reason behind it was to get training, because I think that uh, pop music is easy, is as fun as it is. A lot of singers do lose their voices over time, and I just wanted to be able to sustain my voice for the rest of my life, and I knew getting trained um, and properly would help me sustain that. So that was really kind of the images behind that, and it was a really rigorous program, but I'm very, very grateful having gone through it. That is amazing, too. And of course, you know, I, I guess there's a lot of a, a training and, um, you know, coaching involved in opera and just a mm-hmm. lot of discipline. And of course, yes. you know, you know, how much how much of it um, goes into opera compared to, say, just um, regular singing like pop or country western or um, soul or anything like that? Well, I think any 
any genre you really do need to practice and obviously put time into the craft but opera just is kind of a, a completely different wheelhouse so just learning you know about breath support and technique and, and and how to phrase certain things opera is a whole different ball game but being able to apply that to pop music has been really really beneficial for me mm-hmm. and, and that's and that's interesting as well too we'll talk about some of your albums and quite a few songs and your podcast you listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonic web studios.com for all you need look at a professional website without breaking your budget sonic web studios is the answer sonic web studios offers fast affordable custom web designs at below the competition way call today at 1-800-303-3960 that's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Also, take the, the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with a singer, um, songwriter, and actress and host of a social justice podcast. We need to talk Melinda Hale from the Santa Barbara, California era. She sang opera over Azusa Pacific, co-owner of JMV Entertainment. And she has also got quite a few albums out called The One, Give Me Love, and Chicago. You can just uh, tell us all about them. Yeah, so the one was an EP I released uh, last year, and those songs are all on the EP, and it was really my favorite project to date. Um, I just wanted to do five simple songs that meant a lot to me, and it really was the one for me. Um, yeah, it's, it's five songs that all have very special meaning. Um, some of them social justice songs, some of them are love songs, and they're all just very vulnerable and from my heart, so I highly recommend listening to it to get to know me a little bit more as an artist. That is amazing, too, and perhaps you can sing uh, a cappella just uh, one of the songs we get an idea sure uh so this is the second track on the actually i'll do the title track the one so it goes like this i'm made of vows and i'm gonna change the world but i ain't got no plans got my dreams in my head in the sand and i remember everything that we through how people like you and me we gotta work to we're all safe free that's the first place <laughs> that's that's good so far really good and i guess you had a second one you wanted to sing as well i'd love to hear it or we yeah, do should of say <laughs> oh, <of course. laughs> it's very like soulful pop stuff so uh the second one was uh give me love so the chorus is really simple but it's just give me love Give me love, give me love, baby. Yeah, you give me love, give me love, yeah. And it just repeats, and it's kind of like a feel good song that's just repetitive with those two words. You just can keep singing over and over. <laughs> Modern day kumbaya, I gotta tell you that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that gets stuck in my head, which is good. <laughs> you also got mm-hmm. two others called Give Me Love in Chicago, and just uh, tell us all about those. Yeah, so Chicago is a really, really special song to me because I uh, I lived in Chicago for a couple of years and my husband was going to law school out there. And I moved there from New York at the time. And um, I moved there without knowing anything about the city, not, without knowing anybody there. And I kind of almost had to start over. But when I left Chicago to move back out here to L.A., um, it it felt like a second home to me because I had built such a community and a fan base there and a network out there. So that song um, is actually kind of a love song to Chicago and it, it means a lot to me. It's a really, really special song. That is amazing too. And of course, uh, give me love as well too. And uh, you can just uh, talk a little bit about that too. Yeah. So give me love. The one I just sang is uh, when I wrote, for my husband <laughs> so yeah it's, sometimes i've got to you know write the love song so it's a really simple love song that i'm sure people will relate to and enjoy <laughs> and he also had some singles too called gray we run the la la song and story and mm-hmm. maybe you just um pick out some of your favorite songs and just uh tell us about them yeah i would say my two favorites of those singles um are we run and um story and those uh they're on the social justice side which is something that's very important to me so we run i wrote specifically for the black lives matter movement and had a company video um just basically talking about the black experience in america and how we always feel like we're running 
from something. And then story I wrote um, with a, a friend of mine named Kevin Porter who also produced the track. And it was specifically for the homeless community because there's such a um, heroin homeless community and epidemic out here, specifically in Los Angeles, but in the country as well. And I think people don't realize that these people um, got in this situation uh, Sometimes it's just it can happen so quickly, and I think we don't realize that homeless people also have a story. Like they were a child once, they had parents, and it, it's not that you know they're we all people have specific um what's the word I'm looking for uh, mis, uh misconceptions about the homeless community. So I wanted to make sure people understand that the homeless community they all have stories and they're people too. Mm-hmm. And, and also, most recently in the news that the homeless population has grown exponentially, yeah. and uh, and officials in Los Angeles are like, what what do we do now? It's getting bigger right. than the uh, population itself. It is, it is, and so I'm. I, I know they're trying to pass some bills and some budgets to help uh, fix that, and hopefully that will come with affordable housing and mental health care. Um, but I hope people start paying attention to it because it is becoming a huge problem. It mm-hmm. really, really is. And how many people are currently homeless in Los Angeles right now? The last uh, data that I did before the video was about fifty three thousand. Fifty three thousand. Wow, yeah. that yeah. is like the size of some of the cities and suburbs and some of the towns I've lived in. Fifty three thousand. Yeah. That yeah. is shocking. Yeah, Ooh. it's a, it's, a, it's a large number. It really is. It's very sad, and and I think it might have even increased since I did that last research. But I'm hoping that something will change soon. Wow, that is something. Fifty three thousand. And of course, and if you were put in charge of um, trying to solve the homeless situation in Los Angeles, what would you do? For me, I would start with uh, lowering uh, rental rates in general because they, they did a research uh, study, and I think it was even on NPR, that even there's a, a pretty high percentage of people that are homeless that actually have jobs. Mm-hmm. You can't afford to live in Los Angeles. So I would start with making rents lower and places affordable, but you know, I think also figuring out how to have more job opportunities. I think also mental health facilities because there are some homeless people obviously that have mental health issues figuring out how to help them but i would start with housing because with with lowering housing rates for sure that would be the first thing that i would tackle Mm -hmm. and what is currently being done right now about it um i think that's one of the things that they're trying to do either building facilities or taxing tenants that don't they have too high, not the tenants, excuse me, landlords or business owners that have too high of rates. So I'm hoping that, you know, these bills can get passed because it's a really serious situation and there's too many people that are getting put out on the street because they simply cannot for, afford to live in the city. It's not happening in Los Angeles. It's all it's happening all over America, too. And also all the, over uh, the country, the, yeah. the, the middle cities, also small towns and everything else. And of course, it's a problem that needs to be addressed. And we'll also talk about some of the other activities you're involved in. You listen Listen to mm-hmm. the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Also take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with award singing, songwriter, actress, and host of a social justice podcast. We need to talk Melinda Hale from the Santa Barbara California region. She also sang a few tunes from us, some various albums, The One, Give Me Love, Chicago. She sang quite a few songs for us and also included our Gray, We Run, the La La song and story. We talked about the homeless situation in Los Angeles and she's also involved in other activism like Black Lives Matter, Me Too, Save a Child's Heart. And first of all, let's talk about the uh, Black Lives uh, Matter uh, movement as well, too. And tell us how you're involved with that. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, one of the songs I wrote was specifically for Black Lives Matter called We Run. And I've, you know, I've, I've attended events and attended rallies. And it's really just for me about education so that people understand what that phrase really means. Um, you know, I'm very involved in social media, and that's a, a platform that I've been blessed to to have a good following on. So using that to to share with people what 
the purpose of Black Lives Matter is and what the meaning actually is, you know, so people don't get the wrong idea. It, it's not saying, you know, Black Lives Matter more than anybody else. It's just, we just want to matter. And I think um, somewhere it became controversial and, and, and the meaning it was misconstrued, but it's, it's been a really great organization to bring to light just um, issues within the criminal justice system, with uh, systemic racism, and, and things like that that just need to be fixed and dismantled within the country. Mm-hmm. And, and and also, too, um, there, there's also another question about it as well, too, that maybe think about the Black Lives uh, Matter movement. If Martin Luther King Jr. were here in America today, how, how would he how would he view um, the, the state of America today? Oh, that's a great question. I know people like to uh, to bring up Martin Luther King often. Um, I think that he would be disappointed with where we are. But I think that he truly was the original Black Lives Matter activist because his whole platform was for equal rights for black people. That's what he, that's what he marched for. That's what he preached for. That's what he wanted. And I think that um, there are a lot of people involved in black lives matter movement that are following his footsteps. Now in every organization, you're going to have people that probably go rogue and do things a little differently. And and, and it probably uh, causes people to turn away. But I think that he would, it's, I think it's something that he would be involved in for sure. Mm -hmm. And how's our current government, um, you know, handling the black lives matter movement? Well, the current government, (laughs) there's a lot that the current government isn't, I would say, isn't really uh, doing very well. But um, I'm hoping in in the next few years that we'll be able to uh, address it more. So I will see that. Okay. All right. Well, (laughs) well, that sounds good as well, too. And, of course, we'll hear more about it later on, too. You're also involved in the Me Too movement. And uh, you can tell us about that. Yeah. So, again, a lot of my involvement comes with writing songs. Um for those movements and and sharing them in that way. So one of the songs that um, uh, I connected with Me Too movement was a song I have called Stand. um, And that was really just about standing up for what you believe in and what you're fighting for. And um, I, you know, I've of course been involved in in events and and then supporting in that way. So I'm not as directly involved with Me Too campaign as I am with the Black Lives Matter movement, but it's it's something that I support. Same with LGBTQ rights and, and things like that. I'm very involved in like the homeless um, the homeless community, um, helping with, with outreach there and ministry to my church, and of course with Black Lives Matter as well. And and of course the one important thing that matters is the children as well too. You also yes. uh, supported the Save a Child Heart Foundation. Yes. And, uh, tell us about the uh, foundation, by the way. Yeah, so Save a Child Heart Foundation um, helps find heart transplants for kids that cannot find them. And so they get funding to help kids uh, with heart conditions get medical care that they need. But if you also need the heart transplant, they're able to help pay for those medical costs. So it's a really beautiful organization and and it is an international organization. So I've attended some uh, events for them as well. And, um, you know, anything with kids, I'm happy to support. That is amazing, too. We'll talk about your podcast in just a minute. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention The Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Widener Show can be heard on themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewidenershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Also take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with award-winning singer, songwriter, actress, and host of the Social Justice Podcast. We need to talk Melinda Hale. She's from the um, Santa Barbara region, now living in Los Angeles. Also sang opera at the Azusa Pacific and co-owner of JMV Entertainment. She also had some um, albums out called The One, Give Me Love in Chicago. Also sang a few tunes. And she was also into uh, various activism, like Black Lives Matter, Me Too, Save a Child's Heart, and more. And also... Um, and also having also being involved with the homeless in Los Angeles, um, doing something about it. And of course, you also have a podcast called We Need to Talk, and uh, tell us all about that. 
Yeah, so uh, We Need to Talk started, uh, I started it last year as a live panel discussion um, just to discuss different topics that I felt people needed to talk about. So we had different panel discussions on racism, about LGBTQ inclusion, about the criminal justice system, and the response from the live panel discussion made me want to turn this into a podcast. And so I asked a very dear friend of mine who, uh, we have some opposing views, but we're pretty much aligned to be my co-host on the show. And we basically tackle everything. I mean, everything in politics and entertainment and culture, things that we feel need to be talked about. And we have special guests on the show often, and it's a really, really great discussion. And I've enjoyed it. So we, I started the podcast in March of this year, and we're now in our second season. We do about 20 episodes every season, and it's been great. It's been well-received, and we also just – I just launched a um, – uh, a companion blog to go along with the podcast so we dive a little deeper into uh, other issues within the blog you know you try to have every medium that people can listen to so if you don't listen to the podcast you'd rather read a blog you can read a blog about some of the topics but we try to cover everything and just have deep um, interesting conversations that engage the audience that, that is amazing too besides the activism we talked about what are some of the other subjects you've touched upon on your podcast so we focus a lot on uh, politics, uh, current stuff within uh, the country and state of the union, any cultural trends, um, uh, things within entertainment as well. Um, you know, we will cover racism, we'll cover current um, events as far as like cases, like we just recently covered the Amber Geiger case. Um, we'll talk about, um, you know, just thoughts on interracial relationships, thoughts on religion, things like that. So there's some broad topics and very specific topics. It's really just kind of an all encompassing podcast of just things that we feel we need to talk about. That's amazing. Who are some of the famous guests you've had on the show? Um, so we've had, uh, I, I don't even want to say famous guests, but we've had um, some people with great credit. So we've had, you know, uh, doctors, we've had uh, writers in the entertainment industry, we've had um, political activists, uh, democratic strategists, so things like that. So I try to have a wide range of, of people. We have some really cool guests coming up, hopefully getting them confirmed soon, but it's kind of a wide range of people that we've had. That's amazing, too. And where can we find your podcast? Yeah, so the easiest way is um, on Apple Podcasts, just hashtag We Need to Talk. Um, but you can also go to We Need to Talk the blog dot com, and you can and it has the blog and the podcast on that website. But it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all the places that you can find a podcast. It's available. That is amazing too. And to and to tap at all that, and of course, continue your little empire. You're also co owner of a uh, JMV Entertainment. Tell us all about that. Yeah, so my husband and I started this company a few years ago because we wanted to be able to give um, opportunities for talented musicians that we know in the area to make extra income while they're trying to achieve their dreams. So we have a couple of bands and a couple of artists that we represent, and we basically book them for private parties, corporate events, weddings, things like that, just being able to have an extra insor- extra source of income for people that we've feel are very talented and and trying to achieve things in LA because, you know, we want everybody to be able to try and achieve their dreams, but living in LA is expensive. So we were lucky that we were able to start this company together and be able to provide work for people. That's amazing. How long has that been going for? About four years. Nice. Very nice. And uh, how does one person, how's one person or a band or musician get on your uh, entertainment? Yeah, they just have to email us and send us an impressive impressive package. And if we're interested and think that it's something that we could pitch to potential talent buyers, then we'll take them on the roster. We keep our roster pretty small. Um, Right now we have about five or six artists and bands on it, but I'm always looking for new people to possibly represent. And, and uh, And where can they send materials to? What's the email? The email is info at jmv-entertainment.com. That is amazing. For any uh, entertainers out there, that's the uh, email address. Send it out, and uh, they'll get back to you. And, of course, uh, just a couple of things here. You've been fantastic. What do you consider your most favorite project and most challenging? Um, my most favorite project was probably the last EP that I released, The One. And I think the most challenging um was probably uh, We Run just because of the content and trying to get the video right and getting the message across properly. But, you know, art is um, something that you have to put everything into, and sometimes it's, it can be difficult, and if it doesn't come with challenges, then you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what's your most memorable moment? 
Uh, most memorable moment in my career, um, I would say probably this summer, I, I, I was very lucky enough to open for Smokey Robinson. Oh, nice. At the, at the State Fair. So that was a really incredible moment for me. Yeah. That has to be amazing. One of my favorites, yes. too, by the way. So who do you Yeah, con- he's incredible. He's yes. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Um, I think to date, uh, Whitney Houston is still up there. And I think, um, like I said, the singer-songwriters that I listen to, Sarah Bareilles, India Ari, Gavin DeGraw, they're all, you know, very, very influential in, in what I do, so mm-hmm. for sure. And, yeah. what's, and what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Don't be afraid to ask questions. What? What's know, that? Okay. Don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think people are afraid to hear no, and I think people are afraid to look stupid, but you'll never get an answer if you don't ask, so don't be afraid to ask questions. That's a good point. I've never heard anyone answer like that. That is a very good point. And um, <laughs> Melinda, just want to say a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Look forward to thank having you again soon, and um, also play a few tunes for us. And uh, before we go here, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, and where can they find your music? Absolutely. I'm currently just writing right now, working on some, some new songs. Hopefully, we'll be able to release some new music in the next year. I'd like to take some time off um, from performing and just focus on writing and, and growing in that way. So that's what I'm currently working on. Um, but I am always active on social media, of course, with my blog and my podcast. So you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Melinda Hale, M A L Y N D A H A L E. Please message me. I always write people back, and I love engaging with new fans and new people. And and tell us again about your podcast and where can they find it. Yes, and you can find the podcast at hashtag We Need to Talk on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or at We Need to Talk the blog dot com. And we're also on social media at We Need to Talk the podcast. And, And also your website for entertainment. Yes, my website for entertainment is www.jmb-entertainment.com. Fantastic. Melinda, just want to say you've been fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. Looking forward to having you again soon. And please do me a favor, okay? Keep us up Mm -hmm. to date. Absolutely, we'll do. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the Mike Wagner Show. 